بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Welcome to another episode from the Ramadan Reflections in which we see victorious events that took place in our history. Hoping that we can seek some lessons from them of how the previous ones received their victories inside of Ramadan. And so that we can rectify our lives and our futures by acting upon them. And so we travel back in time to a moment in history which is the 20th day of Ramadan. That day will always resonate in our history as the day of the conquest of Makkah, Fath Makkah. This was the day and to give it context and how important of a pivotal moment that was in our history. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he left Makkah al Mukarramah. He was holding on to the drapes of the Kaaba and he was almost like missing the one who's going to never be able to see the Kaaba again, not knowing whether he'll see the Kaaba again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew the anguish and pain of the separation from the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had grew up under the, in the shade of the Kaaba. He would remember the fun times with his grandfather Abdul Muttalib who would place a couch right next to the Hatim of the Kaaba. And the Prophet would go sit there. He would remember these days when he was holding onto the drapes that day when he was about to leave Mecca. He would remember the fun memories of his aunts and uncles that they would be around the majlises of Abdul Muttalib. He would remember Abu Talib entering him inside of the Kaaba. He would remember the days when they placed a stone on the Kaaba. This was the fond memories that he had. And today he had to give up his passport for that beautiful place, which was Makkah al mukarrama and leave. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rather said to his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna alladhi farada alayka al-Qur'ana la raduka ila ma'ad. Indeed, the one who has given you this book as a law will surely bring you back. Allahu Akbar. This was the promise that the Prophet ﷺ was being given by his beloved Rafiq al-A'la, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he leaves Makkah and then he goes to Medina al-Munawwara and then many years have passed by. It's almost like the ninth, uh, eight, eighth or ninth year of uh, Hijrah. And now the Prophet ﷺ sees in a dream that him and his companions have are doing the pilgrimage inside the Kaaba. Now he, as he arose, awoke from his sleep, he told the Sahaba the dream that he had seen. Now they all automatically assumed that this was a, a, a go ahead, that we are going back. And this was almost like the, the separation had been too long at this point. And the Sahaba were missing Makkah. The Prophet was no doubt missing Makkah. And that's so for that reason, whenever the Prophet has a dream, this has to be a go ahead. And so they started packing their bags, they were getting ready for this journey. All the Sahaba were absolutely preparing. The Prophet is prepared. They get to a place, as we know, called Hudaybiyah. And this is where this treaty is going to be taking place because they'll be stopped by the Kuffar of Makkah who assumed that they were coming to attack as the attack the, uh, the, the people of Makkah. And so they came out and they said, listen, you can't come inside. You can't do this. You can't do that. And because to clear the matter, the Prophet ﷺ has sent Hazza Uthman ibn Affan, who the Kuffar still respected as a leader, as, a, as an elder of the Meccan community, to tell them that this was not their purpose. They just wanted to just do the pilgrimage and they would leave. But this, but this, this treaty that takes place at Hudaybiyah, and this treaty was so tough that year, in the ninth year of Hijrah, where the Prophet ﷺ is told by the spokesperson from the Kuffar side that you can't do Umrah this year, you can't do the pilgrimage this year, you can come back next year, but you can only stay for three days. 
if you want to, if anybody wants to leave um, uh, your place and come to Makkah, then we, we, he's, he's free to do so. If any of your people are captured, we don't have to return them. If any of our people are captured, you have to return them. If anybody takes allegiance to any of the two sides, we will uh, respect them as being from your parties, each other's party. And they're the armistice, they're the a truce, if you will. For 10 years and nobody will fight from, the, the, from this point onwards for 10 years, unless one of you violate this treaty. All this was one-sided and it was too hard for the Sahaba sometimes to even understand the wisdom. But the Prophet wasallam agreed to all these terms and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rewarded their patience by saying inna This was a great victory which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared inside the Quran. But it was a year after that the Prophet wasallam is going to be now because of the Banu Bakr who were the, who were the allies of the Meccans and the Banu Khuza'a were a tribe that had taken and become allies of the Muslims. They had beef from like back in the days. And so they would fight with one another. And this was something that they stopped doing when the Prophet ﷺ got his nubuat, etc. And they stopped this. But now all feuds had all resurfaced and they started to fight. So the Banu Bakr who were on the side of the Quraysh, they actually broke the treaty. And so the Prophet ﷺ was really, really angry at this point. The hadith mentioned that he was angry like he's never been angry before because of this truth, truth, truth that had been taken, that had been broken. And so the Prophet ﷺ, now he's going to gather some people. Now just to give you some context, remember what we said in the previous episode, that the, the Muslims in the Battle of Badr were 313. At the time of Ahad, there's going to be 700 Muslims, so they're increasing in number. At the time of Hudaybiyah, there's going to be 1,500. This is like, you can see this pattern that they're always increasing, increasing. Now at the time of this march to Fatih Makkah, at the time of the conquest of Makkah, the Sahaba, subhanAllah, were 10,000 strong. And they were marching all the way that they were about to liberate Makkah al mukarrama as was their home, their birthplaces. They were going after so many years back to this place, Allahu Akbar. And you're going to see that the Prophet wasallam he stops by before they actually enter over the mountains of Makkah. He says everybody individually write, light some ca candles in the night. Abu Sufyan comes out to see over the valley to see what's going on. And he sees thousands of uh, campfires lit. And he assumes that there's a huge army that like he's never seen before. He's about to go back and tell the Meccans what's, what's happening. But his friend Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet wasallam, who's also going out to scout to see what the Meccans are up to. He says, you're my friend Abu Sufyan, we go back a long way. And so I'm going to take you to the Prophet wasallam. Maybe you can stop this bloodshed that's about to take place. And so the Prophet Abu Abbas is going to be taking Abu Sufyan. But look at the, the wisdom of Abbas. He says, now we're going to ride on the same conveyance. And it's the conveyance, the white mule of the Prophet So that anybody who sees the white mule, they know that these people, they won't be attacked because they're under the order of the Prophet The Abu Sufyan, everybody sees him along the way. They see the white mule, they don't say anything. They carry on, they let him pass. Until he gets to Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. When he sees the, the Abbas, he sees the white mule of the Prophet wasallam. But then he sees Abu Sufyan. He says, he's the enemy of Islam, let me at him. And then he begins this chase. But the, Abu Sufyan quickly gets to the tent of the Prophet wasallam, And it's a long story, but it's, it's a beautiful story. But Abu Sufyan is the one who's now noticing every step of the way. These people's faces that he's seeing in the side of the Muslims were ones that were not so long ago on the side of his. They were on the side of the Kuffar of Mecca. And so this is almost changing, the change is happening inside of him. And we're going to see that that moment comes when Abu Sufyan embraces Islam, Allahu Akbar. Now the Prophet wasallam is going to be entering into Mecca in this 20th, uh, 20th date of Ramadan. 
And when the Prophet is going to be entering Allah Akbar, he's the conqueror and conquerors do as the conquerors do. He could go with the shan with his head held up high that you did this to me. You took the Kaaba away from me. You did this to my uh, daughter. You made a, you know, have a miscarriage. You made a loser child. You made so many of them bloodshed. He could have said that this is a dear retribution, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, reading the verse of the Quran, Ja'al Haqwa Zahaq al Batil, that he's reading that, you know, the truth has come and falsehood has, has vanished. This is the, the humility the Prophet was, heads, was bowed so low that at times it would even touch the back of the camel that the Prophet was riding upon. And with this humility that he rides into Makkah al mukarramah as the beautiful conqueror of Makkah. That 20th of Ramadan, Allah Akbar, was one like we've never ever seen before. In fact, you see that the, one of the Ansar men, the leaders of the Ansar, that he's by the name of uh, Sa'ad ibn Ubada. He says to Abu Sufyan, he says, Abu Sufyan, he says, Ya Abu Sufyan, Al Yawm Yawmul Malhama, Al Yawm Tustahallul Ka'bata. He says, This is a day, o Abu Sufyan, is a day of war. This is a day that we will cleanse the Kaaba from the filth of the idol worship, etc. Abu Sufyan instantly goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, look what uh, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah is saying. He said, this is a day of war. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrects him. He says, Ya Abu Sufyan, he says, listen. He says, Abu Sufyan, he says, listen to this. He says, Al Yawm Yawmul Yu'adhimu Bihil Ka'bah. He says, Al Yawm Yawmul Marhama Yawm Yu'adhimu Allahul Ka'bata. That today is a day of mercy. Today is a day where Allah ennobles and, and makes even grander the Kaaba that we have, the house of Allah. And now he says his famous statement, he says, whoever enters the Haram, Fahu Amin, he's protected. Whoever holds on to the drapes of the Kaaba, Fahu Amin, he's protected. Whoever mandakhal a bayt Abi Sufyan, Fahu Amin, and to honor the rank of Abu Sufyan who just entered into Islam, whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, He's also going to be spared. Whoever enters their own houses and puts down their weapons, they're also going to be spared. And here the conqueror showed how a conqueror should be. That he 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 conquered the hearts with mercy that day. Allah Akbar. The Prophet وسلم, sees the Kaaba. He asks for the keys of the Kaaba. Uthman ibn Talha is going to be the key bearer. They take the keys of the Abu uh, Uthman ibn Talha and then they open the door of the Kaaba. The Prophet وسلم, Bilal and others are going to be the ones who pray inside the Kaaba. And thereafter when he comes out, he gives the keys back to Uthman this, uh, ibn Talha. And he says to him, he says, this is something we don't take by force. It was in your hands and it will remain in your hands, which affected him really, really immensely. In fact, if we look even to this day, the keys to the Kaaba still remain because of that beautiful statement of the Prophet Sallallahu in the progeny of this beautiful one called Uthman ibn Talha. Now the Prophet Sallallahu addresses the ahl Makkah. He says, what should we do with you? Now the Arabs were uh, masters of diplomacy and words. So they said, he says, you are a a, a, a pie, a, you are a, a generous one, the son of the generous. He says, you should do as uh, brothers do to one another. So the Prophet says, oh, are we brothers now? He says, the Prophet is also going to say, he says, you are definitely brothers. You are my brothers. But he says, you are like the brothers of Yusuf in this way that he would, they did with Yusuf He says, but I will also respond to your requests like Yusuf salam, gave the response to his brothers. La tathriba alaykum al yawm. There will be no reproach, no re revenge upon you today. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of the sins. Wa hu arhamur rahimeen. And Allah is the one who forgives the most merciful and the most forgiving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the hands of the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet of mercy, the one who was sent as a rahmatul lil alameen, forgave even those hardened ones who were attacking the Muslims, who hurt the Prophet sallallahu who were personal with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But his heart was that 
that he could even forgive the worst of enemies. And this is why them enemies became Waliyun Hameen, became the best of friends, best of allies. And this is the almost like the turning point or the tipping point in the life of the Prophet The next year is going to be known as the Amul Wufud, where great groups and qawms came into the folds of Islam by this mercy that the Prophet gave. By Allah, if you remember the 20th of Ramadan, always remember that moment of Fatih Makkah, Makkah, the conquest of Makkah, where hearts were won by the mercy shown on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory by these elect qualities. Let us look into the life of the Prophet wasallam, how his elect qualities were. Take each one, if we can take one this Ramadan, then let us take that of forgiveness or overlooking those who do bad with us, that we be good with them. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one that when anybody was ignorant with him, he only increased his clemency and, and his, his kindness towards them. These are the akhlaq, the one hearts. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify our hearts and may Allah give victory and, and to the in ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah ease the sufferings of the ummah, may Allah give victory to all the world and the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the 20th of Ramadan, the day of Fatih Makkah. Remember, this was Ishara for you to now read upon it, open the books of Sirah and read it in detail. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hi, it's